Hi everyone, and welcome to the Canadian Redneck Channel. My name is Dave, and today we'll be finishing up our series on the 414 back half. We'll be stripping apart the transmission. Um, so, I uh, will get the uh, camera moved around so you can see what's going on, and we'll get started. The first step to remove the clutch housing from the front of the transmission is to remove the cap and the uh, front PTO shaft, the PTO driving shaft, from the clutch housing, like I showed in the PTO video. Uh, I can link that below. Under the back of the clutch housing, there is a cast iron plate here on the bottom, and we'll remove that. There's like, uh, I think, eight bolts around. I've got one bolt left on the corner over there. I'll take it off, and we'll drop it down. Now we took that plate off because in underneath, on the inside of the clutch housing at the back end, there's four bolts. You can see one, two here, and there's two more up inside there. Yeah, they're out of sight with the camera, but they're about three inches up the side maybe that we have to remove. Along with the four bolts in under the cover, there's three bolts on each side to remove. And all of those, the ones underneath and these ones on the side, take a three quarter inch wrench. So we have all the bolts out of our clutch housing now. But you can see it's still tight to the transmission. It's on a couple of dowels in here, and there's a gasket between the two halves, and it's probably sticking there. So it usually requires a little encouragement to uh, come loose. So we just give it a little tap and see if we can't get it to come free. sledgehammer get it to break free and a little encouragement with the pry bar now we'll get it to uh, slide right off I expect. There we go. Now we just slide it off over the, over the transmission input shaft. Next we'll remove our shift cover. It's secured with eight bolts around the outside. We already have those removed. And the shift cover lifts right off. At the front of the transmission, we have retainers for the input shaft and the counter shaft in the transmission. So we'll take the bolts out of all those next. The retainer for the counter shaft just comes off. And this nut on the bottom shaft we have to remove, and it has a washer in behind that uh, has a tab bent over as a lock. So we have to unfasten the lock, and then we remove the nut. Now we remove the nut, and we can get that shaft to stop moving by uh, slipping the uh, couple of gears in gear up here in the transmission and that will lock it up.
In order to remove the input shaft, we have to drive the counter shaft backwards until it drops down out of the bearing to provide clearance for the teeth on the back side of this input shaft to come out through by. On the inside end of the input shaft, there is a roller bearing in here, so you want to check that out when you have this apart. The transmission main shaft is held into the case with three bolts at the back end here. They also take a three quarter inch wrench. The main shaft will now slide forward out of the transmission. Okay, once the uh, bearing retainer has slid forward from the transmission case, you just, yeah. you just slide the shaft forward until you can get your hand to the back of it, and then you slide it up out of the case from the front. Here we have uh, the arrangement of the of your main shaft and the transmission. This is your ping uh, this is the pinion gear which drives the uh, crown gear, the drives your differential. This is your first reverse sliding gear, this large one. The next one to it is your sec second and third sliding gears. And this is your fourth gear and the main shaft driving gear. This little locking collar is your high range collar. It slides ahead and locks to the input shaft which pins on here. Now one of the common issues besides you know just gears wearing you'll, you'll want to check uh, for chips on the teeth, uh, the edges being ground off, your mating side of the gear is always going to be a little bit rounded just so it'll mesh with the next gear but if it's ground off excessively or people grinding gears don't know how to shift properly uh, you want to replace them or any chips or anything like that another thing to check for this is called the sliding quill gear here and that comes off the shaft and it has needle bearings inside of it two sets of, of roller bearings, needle bearings, and you want to check those out because they, they can cause trouble also. This, this little collar here is just pushed on, so if you give a couple of... couple of smacks up with the other gear, slide right off. Now we tap the counter shaft out towards the rear. Down in on the right hand side of the case is your reverse idler assembly. Uh, on the other side, behind, be underneath the differential, underneath the brake pinion shaft, is a snap ring that holds this all in place. When the snap ring is removed, this will just pull, f pull forward out of the case. And that gives you your two gears. As you can see, the edge of this one is chewed off quite a little bit. Ground up and chewed. So this would want to be replaced. That is the one that engages with your first reverse slider from the top shaft. 
on the bottom shaft on this transmission this is the uh, first gear on the counter shaft which is actually part of the counter shaft and you can see it was kind of chewed up on the edges too would be a good idea to replace that one also the other gears were actually in pretty good shape so that concludes our video and our series on the B414 hat back half I uh, hope you enjoyed these videos and uh, if you have any questions or comments you can leave that in the comment section below I hope you've uh, enjoyed these videos and found them helpful. Uh, if there's anything in particular you'd like to see, you can leave that in the comment section below also and certainly make those videos if I can. Uh, please give us a like on the video, subscribe to my channel, and as always, have a great day.